Your Majesty, distinguished heads of state and government, excellencies, dear friends, a very cordial welcome to the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. We meet here at an extraordinary moment of history. We are in the midst of a deep transformation, sometimes disruptive transformation, of business models, of economies, of society, of politics. And we are here not just to look what's happening, but we are here to construct in a very positive way, and I should say in a self-confident way also, the future. We are here the biggest multi-stakeholder community assembled, and I greet particularly the representatives of over 70 governments, over 300 ministers here. A very cordial welcome to you, our partners and members from the business community. But one third of the participants here represent society, the young generation, a very cordial welcome. May I just ask our global shapers and our young global leaders to stand up. We have here our social entrepreneurs. The people who bring to us the knowledge, the grassroots experience. We have all the experts here. And of course, the media leaders which interconnect us with the rest of the world. I'm also very proud to say this is not just a Western meeting. One third of the participants comes from the emerging world. We have the largest participation ever from China, a very cordial welcome, the largest participation from India and from other BRIC countries. We are here assembled under the theme, and I would rather say the motto, responsive and responsible leadership. What does it mean? Responsive means that we listen to, we interact with those who really have entrusted us with leadership. We cannot be detached from the basis. But on the other hand, it's very important that we are all decision makers, policy makers, we have to act. We have to have the courage to construct the future. We have to have vision. We have to have values to show us the direction. I would like to use the metaphor of a pilot. A pilot needs a radar system, and I would say we need all our contextual and emotional intelligence to understand what's going on. But on the other hand, you need also a compass which shows you the direction. We have four main pillars for the program. The first one is we have to reinvigorate the global economy. And for doing so, which is very important, 
if we want to address the issue of social inclusion, of creating the necessary jobs for the young generation, we first have to recreate confidence in our, into our future. Sometimes it seems that the world is just overwhelmed by pessimism and cynicism. No, we should look in a very confident way into the future. Second, we certainly have to repair certain deficiencies of the capitalist system. We have to restore the social contract. And in this respect, we have also, and we ask you to sign it, a compact which obliges you to think much more long term and not just short term. The third pillar of our program has to do with what we discussed last year. It is the impact of the fourth industrial revolution. Many things which we had put down and which we discussed last year were considered to be science fiction. It's amazing how the fourth industrial revolution, with all its opportunities, but also with its risks, is coming on us and using Davos language, I would say, nearly like an avalanche. The fourth pillar of our program is to strengthen, and I would say to reimagine, global cooperation. We are certainly in the transformation from a unipolar to a multipolar world. But we have to remind ourselves at any time that the world today is so interconnected, so interdependent, that at the end we are part of a common global destiny. I would add to those four parts a fifth part. I think when we look at the images coming from Aleppo and other terrible places in the world, we have to make sure that we not get immune against those atrocities. And for this reason, we have attached a lot of importance to deal also in many sessions with the humanitarian challenge. It's just not acceptable that humankind has still to witness what we are seeing in terms of those horrible things. Now, we prepare the future, we improve the state of the world, and for doing so, we have defined and worked with many of you during the whole year to present and to discuss here 50 concrete projects, all integrated into a systems approach. There are 14 different systems where we want to make progress. Just today, for example, we published as a result of one of the work groups, a report on how inclusive growth can be combined, or social inclusion can be combined with economic growth. The two are not in contradiction. We also are here a platform. Let's face it, Davos is a global village, an isolated place. And we should remember ourselves that we are watched, and not only watched, we are interacting with the whole world. We have millions of people following us through the social media, and we have created a number of interactive events to be in touch with those people who cannot join us here in Davos. We are here 
and we respect the diversity which you represent here. But at the end, we will make progress if we share a number of fundamental values. First, I think we always should prioritize the public social good over our own interests. Second, I think we are here as representatives of humanity. So it's very important that we emphasize humanization over robotization and also globalization. And in this respect, looking at the human dimension, and I greet also all the cultural leaders here in the room, and particularly our three awardees of this evening, and in this respect, your presence as cultural leaders and what we are doing in the next hour is absolutely essential because, as I mentioned, we want not to be robotized, but we want to leave this meeting even more humanized. Thank you, and I may now ask Hilde Schwab, my partner since 47 years, to introduce our abodies.